You know what drives me berserk? Memory. I mean, the word itself is fine, actually. It's a fun game for kids, an iconic song from Cats, and without mine, I'd have a pretty hard time making these videos. But no, my problem with the word memory is the confusion that it causes. Ask a dozen big box salespeople how much memory, you know, this computer has. And I guarantee you that while some of them will tell you it has 16 gigs of RAM, um, others will report the capacity of the SSD or the hard drive instead. And therein lies the problem. You just got potentially three different answers and worse, none of them are really quite wrong. This problem exists because most folks aren't aware that there are so many different types of memory inside a single PC. But don't worry, we're gonna take care of all of that at the end of this video. You'll be correctly referring to the memory types in your PC like a champ. Let's start with DRAM. What most people are referring to when they talk about computer memory. Dynamic random access memory is optimized to sit in a sweet spot where it delivers high performance and high density or capacity at a reasonable cost. DDR R3 is an example of DRAM, and it's all volatile memory, which means that once you cut power to it, anything stored in DRAM quickly fades away. And on top of that, this is the dynamic part of the DRAM thing, is it's unable to retain data even while it's powered on, if it's not being constantly refreshed or rewritten. The good news is that DRAM isn't used for long-term storage, and most of it will be set up for your CPU or graphics processor to use as working memory that contains only the information needed to help them complete the task at hand and nothing more. So these characteristics are not detrimental in any way. Next up is SRAM. This stands for static random access memory. It's a volatile storage medium, just like DRAM, but the key difference is that it is capable of delivering much higher performance and that while it's receiving power, it doesn't need to refresh each bit periodically just to keep it from fading. The data will wait instead to be overwritten. Modern high-performance CPUs use SRAM as a way to store the data your CPU needs most right next to it for frequent, fast access. But due to its cost, it's typical for this cache to have a capacity of only a few megabytes. Flash memory, which is a subset of EEPROM, is the first type of memory in our rundown that is non-volatile, meaning that data is retained even when there is no power being provided to the chips. This feature comes with a significant performance reduction and a limited number of program erase or write cycles, though. This is a necessary trade-off, though, because NAND flash is used to store things like the operating system, applications, and other important data that that can't be erased whenever the system is powered down in a consumer PC or device. An SSD is an example of something that uses NAND flash, but in spite of the fact that I just said it has reduced performance, it's still much faster than a more traditional hard drive. The only drawback here is that due to their much higher cost compared to a hard drive, typical capacities for SSD devices are tens or hundreds of gigabytes in, you know, portable devices, or up to a thousand gigabytes or a terabyte in high performance computers. NAND flash is also used in low cost products like USB thumb drives, but the chips used for those are much lower performance and not capable of as many program erase cycles. Our last memory type is mechanical storage or the hard drive. N note the use of the word storage there. Calling it memory is actually a bit of a stretch even though it does store data like the other technologies we've discussed. It's very very different. Hard drives use a write head to store data as a series of ones and zeros so it's still digital storage in the same way that you know anything else is storing this data digitally but it's on a magnetic recording layer on a disc called a platter that is spinning anywhere from 5400 to 7200 times per minute around in a typical hard drive. Now hard drives have been a staple of personal computers since the 60s and while they're not nearly as fast as any of the other memory types covered here due to the physical movement required to access them they are still going to be important for a long time as a cost-effective mass storage medium that doesn't degrade when it's 
not plugged into anything. Speaking of not being plugged into anything, Hotspot Shield is the easy and expensive way to set up a VPN solution for your PCs and devices. Their Elite membership, which you can save 20% on by checking out the link in the video description and using offer code Linus, works for up to five devices, including iOS and Android devices. It helps you maintain your anonymity online by masking your IP address. Now, the way a VPN accomplishes this is by rerouting all of your traffic securely through a remote centralized server. So to the websites you're visiting, the traffic appears to be coming from Hotspot Shield's data center, but it's actually coming from you. Now, while this technology, rerouting traffic, isn't likely to improve your ping times for gaming, it does have some other benefits as well that make it worthwhile, including allowing you to access services that you otherwise wouldn't be able to, such as US Netflix, if you live outside of the USA. So once again, guys, check out the link in the video description to learn more, and don't forget to use offer code Linus to save 20%. Thanks for watching this episode of Fast as Possible on Tech Quickie. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like it if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. We do appreciate your feedback. It means a lot to us. You can feel free to leave comments on, you know, future episodes that you'd like to see here on Fast as Possible as well. And thanks again for watching. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to Tech Quickie for more Fast as Possible episodes just like this. And I will take a breath at some point here. <gasps> and we're done.